Hey friends, good morning. Uh, we're the Espinosa's Urban Farm. I'm Jose. This is Nicole, AKA Mario. <laughs> <laughs> what you got going on, babe? So today we're gonna be taking you guys on the very first garden tour of 2021. This is gonna be our spring garden tour. This will kick off the season. We've got a lot growing here. We're gonna do some radish harvesting from the, the stepchild, the middle child did. <laughs> Um, we did a bunch harvesting earlier, especially from the green stock. I'll show you guys that and share that with you. But we're going to just take you along, take you through the growing spaces, show you where we're at right now, what we've got growing for this season, and kick things off. Let's do it. guys let's go ahead and pull these radishes if you guys remember like about a month back we planted this bed we did peppers and we interplanted some radishes that we can take um, advantage of you know some more growing space so let's go oh that's such a nice one it's nice right yeah let's see that I think that every season our produce has gotten better and better it has, it has. I think, you know, we did put some good soil in here and uh, it's just been getting better and better. It's not like the greatest right off the bat. Seems like you guys, time. To, it takes time for it to like really. I feel like it has to balance and things have to become available to the plants. But gosh, yeah. these are definitely the most beautiful French breakfast radishes we've ever grown. Look at those. They're so beautiful. Nice. <laughs> so these are five uh, Chinese five color peppers. Can't wait. They're, they've been taking a little bit of time for them to get for them to grow, but they're finally in their growing stage. So they're doing pretty good. These are our California Wonder Bell peppers. We also have some habanada peppers here. Those are pretty small, but they're coming along. And then we got our ahi cachucha right in here. Poblanos is the next row right here. And Mario keep picking away. Uh, and then we got shishitos right here in our last row. And then another Chinese five color back there. They're so beautiful, babe. That is our first radish harvest, 2021. It's excellent. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these peppers do in the next two, three weeks because if you recall, we put fish down in this bed <laughs> as fertilizer. So moving over to the OG bed. This is the bed that I took over for this season. Jose picked out what he wanted to do in the, the stepchild bed. So over here, we've got a mix of onions, um, marigolds, tomatoes, and then my one rock star kale plant monster yes well. so this morning you can see how beautiful and big and lush this kale plant is but this morning i went ahead and harvested some more leaves we've been harvesting from this each weekend and i mean look at how big these leaves are so we make some nice kale chips out of these and like i said we do that once a week we could harvest more often through the week um but we like to do a lot of kale chips on the weekend to snack on rather than potato chips if at all possible <laughs> So I'll put those in my root pouch here. The tomato varieties that I have in here, I've got Delta Dwarf down in front. I've also got some Flora Gold Micro Dwarf. So these are Flora Gold Micro Dwarf. I've got one right here. And then I've got Delta Dwarf over here. 
as we move through the middle in the back, I have Southern Nights, which is a black tomato variety. It's a really dark tomato variety. And then I've also got a pineapple tomato. And all the way in the back, I've got Berry's Crazy Cherry. So now that um, the tomato plants have some suckers, like this one right here, we'll go ahead and snip that off and then we'll pot it in some soil and we'll propagate a whole nother tomato plant from it and plant that somewhere else in the garden. So I've got marigolds in here as well as the onions, not only to just like interplant and for beauty and to get more production, but they're both supposed to be really good with um, helping to keep the pest pressure down from the tomatoes. So far, everything's growing really well. I also planted fish under most of the tomatoes. There's a couple that I didn't, so we're kind of seeing if, if that makes a difference, but so far. Where did you put the fish at? Oh gosh, I have, to, I have to look back at the other video and see which ones. I know I did not put fish under that smallest berries crazy cherry back there. That one I did not put fish under, or maybe it was this one. I don't know. So yeah, so I'm not super sure where I put the fish. So once I review the previous video where we actually pl I planted out this bed, I will note it so that I can point out next time and we can see if there's a difference in the, the tomato in you know girth and production over the season to see if the fish really make a difference all right guys I had to get some sunglasses it's crazy bright out here um, in this corner bed this season we're doing some lettuce and we're also doing some beans we've got our beautiful arch trellis that we're hoping to have covered in beans after this season so I've got two different varieties of they're called asparagus beans Chinese noodle beans yard long beans it's our first time growing them. We've got a couple that are growing already. Take a look at these. So this is a noodle bean, also known as the asparagus bean. We've got a couple growing here. So hopefully this will be full of beans. And we've got our garden helper. We've got a little brown shadow. <laughs> Dahlia, the Dahlia girl. We've got some ragged jack kale here and it's coming along pretty good. Um, we planted this maybe about three weeks back. Yeah, we transplanted right? it out. Yeah, so we amended the bed here, the row, and then we put these in. And they were pretty small. I can probably start harvesting from these, but I think I'll, I'll wait another week. But look at that. That's gorgeous. I love the color. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. Kale. Yeah. I haven't tried this one yet. Those are mm. awesome. Yeah, that's a really nice, it's very mild. Yeah. Here you go, Bubba. Leah, where's Leah? We have vegetarian <laughs> fur babies. <laughs> they love their greens. They even try and eat the marigold greens. Do we call what kind of kill that is over there? I think, I think that's what this one is, is the dazzling blue. And look what we have growing in between these here. You see this? <laughs> oh my gosh, there's that another That is a squash. I don't know how that got in there. What is that? So. Squash or cucumber? I don't it's know. It's either squash or cucumber. And this stems from my impatience as a gardener sometimes. Something I'm still learning is when these seeds didn't sprout and everything else around it had already pretty much sprouted in the tray. I pulled out everything else, potted those up, and then the, the cells that didn't germinate I went ahead and reused that soil for kale <laughs> and they actually did not even sprout until we planted them in ground after we um, transplanted the kale seedlings out so that just happens sometimes they're little volunteers because I got impatient waiting for them to germinate in the seed tray <laughs> and now we don't know what they are <laughs> but we'll find out soon enough I'm sure <laughs> unlike Nicole I'm a little bit more patient maybe too patient <laughs> back too here patient. Yes. we have um a couple of brussels sprouts uh purple yeah. and then we have our cabbage that we planted a long time ago in fact nicole was telling me like tear them up they're not doing anything but they finally started producing heads look at this those are like little heads now to be fair i didn't say pull the cabbage up i want those brussels sprouts gone <laughs> she did but she was looking at the cabbage too <laughs> And we have some more, uh, this was broccoli, or is broccoli? Yes. But it's not doing anything. And you know what, we're leaving this around because we have a warm composting system, a sub pot, and we use all this extra 
uh, vegetation here and we'll put it in there with the worms and feed them. What do we got over here, babe? What is this giant <laughs> bush? This is uh, my Mexican sunflower. It's my Mexican sunflower. Whatever. <laughs> no, but you can see it's, it's doing fantastic. This thing just grows. Dahlia likes it. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, we cut this back almost down like to the bottom. Yeah, it was like a stem left. Yeah, and look at it now. Here's the trick, if you keep it short, it won't, it will not bloom. You gotta let it grow tall and it'll start blooming once it's big enough. Yeah. Um, I think there's a season. I think it's like late summer, right? Yeah, late summer. Late summer, um, and that's when they'll bloom. So we'll continue cutting it, but we'll time it so that like in midsummer, late summer, it's about this level so that it will bloom. So right here, we've got our harvest from the green stock today. I took this earlier this morning. I like to harvest any of our leafy greens and more tender stuff early in the day because it gets really hot here and things will start to get droopy. You see the parsley here is get, starting to get droopy. But I harvested all of this from this single green stock today. We've got green leaf lettuce. We've got a red leaf salanova blend, tons of nasturtium and nasturtium blooms, which are edible parsley so this will all go into salad for us today i've also got some an incredible rosemary i've never smelled such like pungent rosemary as the rosemary that we grew from seed this season we've got some oregano and then another abundance of thyme this weekend i pretty much harvest from this green stock like this every single weekend and sometimes throughout the week just because things grow so so well and as you can see there's still plenty to take from this green stock so this is definitely one of our, our favorite parts on the urban farm here. Um, as I always say, these will come to, to Tennessee with us and continue to produce for us there. Jose and I often talk about the future of that and you know potentially having a CSA. And I was telling him, if I just filled two, our two green stocks with herbs, that would supply you know between 20 and 30 families with herbs weekly or bi-weekly for a CSA season. And I think that's really great because it's a lot of compact space that you can grow in. So yeah, super happy with the green stock production this year. This is like a butter crunch? Yeah, this is a, a Salanova green butter variety. These are my favorite ones. These are the ones I always talk about us doing head head lettuce. Yeah, we usually cut those down, take the whole head. Yeah, they'll it'll get nice and big. It'll fill up this whole space out here and then we'll take the whole thing. They didn't cut me. So back here in our little raised bed that we built, this season we're doing some lettuce varieties and we'll continue to plant those out every few weeks once we harvest. Um, so we're gonna be starting more of those indoors. We've also got some Thai sweet basil down at the end. We've got more over here behind me. Right here we've got a pepper plant from last season that was doing awful. Um, but Jose, again with his patience, was like, no, Nicole, don't rip it out, let's let it go. And it's starting to come back beautifully, so hopefully this will produce. Over here we've got um, lavender. This is a variety, it's called Oregano Lavender. It will bloom and produce those beautiful purple flowers, but right now it is super soft and smells like oregano. It is so pungent and aromatic, it's wonderful. It you just walk by, like right here, I'm just rubbing it and I can smell it. it, and I can right smell it. Yeah. yeah, it's so great. And that is an edible and culinary variety of lavender too. So we're really excited to try that. This right here is my ahi kachucha pepper plant from last year. We went ahead and cut it back um, at the end of the season and let it over winter. And now it's starting to get a ton of blooms. This thing was giant and covered in ahi kachucha peppers last year. And I am so excited to still have it here with us and producing. And it should produce for years to come as long as we take care of it. This area seems to be doing pretty good, babe. Oh yeah, the peppers in here are taking off. They are covered in blooms. We've got three varieties back here. We've got um, Shishito, Poblano, and Sugar Rush Peach. The Sugar Rush Peach are so bushy and have tons and tons of blooms. Like I'm not even exaggerating. These things should be absolutely loaded with peppers soon. Um, you can see, especially that one in the front there, they get so big and bushy and they're just beautiful. In the back here, we also have some herbs. We've got dill, we've got mint, and some more thyme and some oregano. And everything's doing a lot nicer this year than it did last year. And I've been harvesting from these as well. The mint is just going wild, which is so fun. 
You're gonna harvest those flowers? Are you gonna get the seed? So, so I took a flower this morning off of the dill. It already had gone to seed, so I kind of feel like that dill is gonna self-seed a little bit back here. Um, but I wanna use the flowers for pickles, so hopefully we'll have some cucumbers over here soon. This is our moringa. This has been with us for a few seasons now. Just like the Mexican sunflower, we cut, oh sorry, I have a hair. We cut this one back at the end of the season and it has come back exceptionally well. Um, we like this for adding to salads, for dehydrating powdering, you can use it for tea. And we're actually gonna be harvesting a bunch of this soon and powdering it up for um, Jose's mom. We're gonna send it out to her in California. She really enjoys this. This is another one of our green stocks. This is the green stock original, the five tier. And this one we filled with strawberry bare roots. Um, last season, they were just getting established and now they are starting to produce for us. And as you can see, we're getting a ton of blooms. All of these will hopefully turn into strawberries. And there's a cute little flower right there. And I, I know it sounds funny, but I tell Jose all the time whenever we're eating these that they're the most strawberry tasting strawberry I've ever had in my entire life. And I say that with so much of our produce, like this is the most cucumber tasting cucumber I've ever eaten. And once you grow your own food and start eating it, it's really challenging to continue to eat store-bought stuff because it just lacks so much flavor. So if you can get a green stock and fill it with strawberries, I highly encourage it. These are gonna be the best things you've ever tasted. They're like dessert. Don't get us wrong, we still buy a lot of produce because yeah. you know, we have to eat. We don't produce enough food here to like sustain us. Yeah, it's just you notice such a huge difference. And, and it, it is challenging because I, I wanna only eat what we're growing, but we don't yet produce enough. One day, um, but you just gotta start somewhere. Over here we've got um, my echinacea that's coming back this season. I had three along here in a row. I lost two of them. This is the only one that's come back and this one has a, a ton of blooms this season. They're all down here. Um, so I did actually save echinacea seeds from our plants. No, those are <laughs> from that's, our plants. That's why we lost the other ones because of yes. these guys. They like chewing them up. So I did save seeds last year. I did a germination test. I planted three, I only got one. That one is doing really well and I will um, plant that one out here once it's more established and I'm gonna try and germinate a few more to fill those spaces. But these are wonderful for pollinators. You can dig up the roots um, and use those for tea. The flowers are just beautiful. They smell wonderful and they last for weeks. Like I'd say three to five weeks or so, these blooms last and they're gorgeous. So I love I love having these around. What do we got growing over here, hon? Oh, we got our tomatoes. Finally getting some tomatoes from them. They're still pretty small, but they're getting bigger. The plant itself is pretty small. Um, then we have this one, and I don't know what to do. This is our biggest tomato plant, but it, I haven't oh. had any uh, tomatoes come out of it yet. I mean, there's blooms, but they keep falling off. And I've tried putting some calcium down in the soil, but nothing. Um, I think I'm gonna just cut it and maybe put one of those ones. Yeah, one of the pineapple ones. Yeah, something we propagate from one of the other tomatoes. And then here we have more peppers, shishito. Um, our leaves are getting leathery on this one, but we, we have some blooms and we have some peppers. And then over here, another tomato plant. Look at that. Look at these. They're still growing. Wow. Got I gotta come back and prune these. I haven't pruned them in about a week, so. <laughs> then we got squash here. Do you remember what kind of squash variety this is? I do, if I look at the seed packet. <laughs> she likes putting tags on them. She's got a ton of them. <laughs> I'll look at the seed packets and I'll come back and tag them, okay? <laughs> you got some peas here. Those are volunteers. Volunteer they self-seeded. Yeah, volunteer peas over there. And then you got more squash. This is our biggest sugar rush peach we have so far. Look at this. Take a look. You got some peppers in here. And these get a nice peachy color. I mean, there's like four or five peppers in there. We got more on this side. And there's a bunch of blooms coming in. Uh, we have a jalapeno plant here. Uh, I think I'm gonna cut this back, honey. Yeah. It hasn't been doing much. We got a couple of jalapenos from it. And then we got this um, poblano plant. So interesting how different these pepper plants are. You've seen the sugar rush peach, nice and bushy, really full. And then you see something like this so poblano here. It's tall, uh, lengthy, um, 
with very little leaves. They just, it's funny to me how different they are. Quick asparagus update. We planted these last week and look at it now. We got a shoot. We got two shoots. We got another one coming up over here. Oh yeah. Um, so it's been about, a, it's been seven days. Last Saturday. Today is Saturday. Um, and during the week, I've actually already filled it up with more soil. So I, I, I've uh, put maybe about an inch, inch and a half of soil because I covered it up the first time it came up. And uh, this is what we have. Let's take a look at the other ones. So now those asparagus, because they look like asparagus, those will grow up into the big ferns, right? Yeah, so they'll grow okay. straight up and you can see the little the little knots in them. Those will grow ferns out. Yeah, so and those, big fern. those can grow anywhere from like six to 10 feet yep. as well. Yeah. So asparagus take a lot of room. And another cool fact to know is you'll see berries coming out on these ferns. And those are poisonous, don't eat them. They look tasty because they're like bright red, but you shouldn't eat them, they're poisonous. All right guys, so on this side of the pool, we also have one of Jose's asparagus plants. Got that right here. This one's got the longest little shoot going. And then as we go down, we've got some of my containers. This one here, it's either borage or salvia. I believe this one is borage. I have to look at the leaf type again, and then I'm gonna label them and that way we don't forget what they are. But these, either way, they will bloom. They will have some nice tall bluish purple flowers. Great for pollinators, which is the whole point of me planting them. Plus these are good medicinally, both borage and salvia. Um, so I wanted to make sure to have some multi-use plants here um, in the decorative pots. As we move through, we've got our Mexican sunflower that we propagated. This one will be transferred up to Tennessee. This little guy here, everybody I'm sure knows what this is. This is an aloe plant. Um, I have been harvesting the large leaves from it and I scoop out the gel on the inside and I started freezing it. And we can use those for um, either cuts and burns throughout the season or we can use them in smoothies, things like that. But really good nutritional benefits of aloe. This is my bee balm. I've got two varieties in here. I've got the wild bergamot and I've also got lemon. And then I've got a bunch more inside that I just potted up the other day. These are beautiful flowering plants as well. You can make teas with them. So I'm really excited to add this one to our garden space as well. This is that gorgeous oregano lavender. Um, this is the one I planted up a few videos back. I've got five plants in here. They're growing wonderfully. Um, and I just, I love this one. As I said earlier, it smells beautiful and it feels nice. It's so soft. It's I can smell it from here. It's yeah. great, yeah. I mean, it's all over my hands. They smell wonderful. And then the last one is more of what I'm pretty sure is the borage. <laughs> and then another oregano lavender that I just tucked in there because I was running out of space. But we'll continue to show you these throughout the season and see how lush and beautiful those blooms get. So the last little section here, we have a couple more grow bags and these have cabbage. We've got a green cabbage, a green acre. I think it's green acre. That's not all you have in green there. Express. <laughs> There's also a potato. <laughs> right there and then we have a red acre cabbage which we're gonna take in a second and back here we have I almost said our pickles these are our cucumbers um, there's two varieties we've only gotten a couple cucumbers so far and Jose gets mad at me because I steal them and eat them <laughs> by myself I don't share them <laughs> but we've got a couple growing now I don't know I'd have to get out of the way I think for you to see that one back there there it is and then that big old honker. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna harvest this guy. You gonna have some coleslaw today? Yeah. Or tomorrow, tomorrow. Probably tomorrow with the uh, chicken. The chicken, because he's gonna, what's it called? Uh, Smoky chicken. <laughs> beer can chicken, smoked. There's our cabbage. Oh, that looks nice. <laughs> yep. It's a baby one, but yeah. that's enough for us. Plenty of food for Jose and I, that's for sure. And then we've got worm food, so yeah. can't beat that. All right, friends, so that wraps up our garden tour for today. Yeah, first one of 2021. Right? It's And it's still growing. It's yeah. fairly small right now. It's starting to rain on us. Um, but don't forget to subscribe, guys. Like the video. Share with family and friends. Ring that bell. Yeah. You know, help boost our channel for real. We, we really appreciate that. We are going to be having um, an Instagram contest coming up soon. Oh, it's start, it is starting to rain. Well, I didn't know about this. 
I know, I was a surprise. Wow, well, I'm surprised. <laughs> so we actually just reached 800 followers on Instagram. Um, and I know I've been talking about the, uh, the herbal products that I've been making recently, the, the two salves or balms that I made. So I was thinking I'll go ahead and do a giveaway for reaching 800 followers. I'm gonna be giving away one of the thyme salves, one of the oregano balms. And with that, I'm also gonna be giving away the face oil that I've been making and using for myself. It's a, a cleansing face oil. I've been using it for over a year now. That's all I use to wash my face. Um, so I figured I will do a little giveaway. Cool. So head over to our Instagram, the Espinosa's Urban Farm to check that out and make sure you enter. Nice. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a good one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.